your Bibles, if you will turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Uh -huh. Yeah. And Romans chapter 8 is a long chapter. So I'm not going to read it all, but I'm going to read quite a bit of it so you may be seated. Amen. Romans 8. Let's start at verse 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. I'm going to skip to verse 15. For we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Verse 26, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our, helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 29 through 30, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his Son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. Yeah, yeah. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against yeah, us? Yeah. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Yeah. He that spared not his son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not also freely give us all things? Mm -hmm. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. But nay, in all these things, we are more than, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm a little sick today, so... So, didn't really know what I wanted to title this message, but just looking at the entire chapter, I want to call it the ultimate victory. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank All you, right. Lord. Yeah. And as Christians, if we never get another scripture engrafted into our minds and in our spirit, we need to get this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And some of us... We grew up in the church and we know Romans 8, but sometimes we need that, that reminder, that push to know that there is no condemnation. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Because when we look at this scripture, there's no other scripture that explains more fully the, the defectiveness of our flesh, uh, the defectiveness of our physical universe. And it's a scripture that tells us how the world got this way and what's going to become of it. And there is no other scripture that better expresses with such power and clarity this infallible, this, this flawless process of our salvation mm. from predestination all the way to glorification. Yeah. Being called, being justified, justified just as if I hadn't sinned. Right. And finally, 
end result is being glorified. Yes. Yes. And there's no other scripture that paints this powerful picture of combining the intercession of the Holy Spirit that's in me with the intercession of the Son that is for me and the unfailing love of the Father over me. Thank you, Lord. What a beautiful picture of this amazing plan of God's to keep us for himself. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And there is no other scripture that so candidly and so explicitly describes our necessary sufferings. Mm -hmm. And yet it culminates with a crescendo of an unshakable hope because of God's love for me. Yeah. Because of God's love for you. And there is no other scripture that so directly and yet so gently and sympathetically deals with our struggle to believe beyond a shadow of a doubt yeah. that I am his child. Yes, yes. That we are his children. Yes. It provides the assurance that the Holy Spirit is with us. It catalogs a, a descriptive list of, of the privileges, of the securities, of the assurances, of the hope to hold us firmly in the love of God that keeps us. And all of these truths are presented in Romans chapter 8 to enable us this entire scripture, this entire chapter is, is built to enable us to obey just one command. Mm -hmm. And that command is to live by the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. That's all we have yeah. to do. With all the promises of God in this scripture, with all the assurances, with all the securities, there is just one command. Live by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the law of the Spirit gives life. The law of the Spirit makes me free. It gives me freedom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Free from what? Mm -hmm. The first verse said it. Mm -hmm. Free from condemnation. Yeah. Free yeah. from guilt. Yeah. Free from impending mm -hmm. judgment. And I don't know about you, but you know, I grew up in a society or in a church family that it was all about the guilt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can remember crying, sitting in my chair at home and crying and saying, God, please forgive me. Mm. God, I know I've done wrong and what I had done was unforgivable to the human. But I remember that God said to me, you're forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. Now all you have to do is forgive yourself. Right. 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 And we live in a world where we are accused daily. And I'll go into that a little bit more. But free yourself from the guilt because there is no condemnation. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. God's love and his grace is so fully exemplified in this chapter. But when we read this chapter, it should release in us thank you obedience mm. and it should release in us true worship yeah and i like the atmosphere that was set here this morning because it was all about what he did for us yeah. what jesus christ did for us yeah. every song that we sang you, every word that was said it was about true worship you, to the one and only that could have saved us yeah but this revelation also requires a response. The question is asked, what shall we say to these things? And this isn't a scholastic exercise. This exercise, this is not an academic exercise where we read it and we study it and we take it lightly and then we disregard it. It requires that we act upon it and obey. Right. And if you would imagine for just a moment a court of law where the judge or the jury, they hear the testimony, they review the evidence, and they pronounce a verdict. Mm -hmm. And you know you're guilty. Mm -hmm. And it's not just a burden of proof. It's not just a preponderance of the evidence. Mm -hmm. 
It is clear and convincing evidence. And the scales are tipped. Imagine those old fashioned scales. And the scales are tipped. And it's not in my favor. Mm, yeah. Ooh. Right. And you also know that the penalty is death. Mm. Ooh, right. The Bible says that the law of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. You have the prosecutor and the prosecutor makes an accusation and you are the accused. Yeah. Revelation 12, says, 12 tells us that Satan is the accuser of the mm -hmm. brethren mm -hmm. and he accuses day and night. Mm -hmm. And sometimes he, he uses people, mm -hmm. the people near you, to accuse you, right. Right. to attempt to condemn you, right. Right. Mm -hmm. to remind you of your past. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Right. Right. Day and night, he accuses you. So the prosecutor makes an accusation. He doesn't let up. Hmm. But then imagine that the judge hmm. suddenly leaves his post. The jury suddenly resigns. Hmm. And the judge now beca becomes the counsel mm. for the defense. He becomes our advocate. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. See, the only one that could condemn us mm. has brought about our salvation. All right. He's gone from being judge mm. to being justifier. Yeah. Just as if I hadn't done it. Yeah. And God, he didn't hesitate to give us the best. So why wouldn't he give us the rest? Right. Why wouldn't he give us yes. every gift yes. that we need to make this a triumphant life, a victorious life? No condemnation, condemnation no defeat, and no separation. I have the ultimate victory. And it's not a measure of my worth. Come on. But it's a measure of God's love. Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm not worthy. Mm. The re only reason I'm worthy is because of the blood of the Lamb. Yes. yes. Outside of Jesus, we are guilty. But the evidence is inadmissible. Yeah. You've heard of double jeopardy in the mm. court of law. Right. It would be double jeopardy. So today I want you to declare that Satan, you, you can accuse me all you want. Yeah. But you cannot place me on trial. Yeah. 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 See, I've already been acquitted. Yeah. 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 Not because I'm innocent. Yeah. I'm just not guilty. Yeah. 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 Not because I'm innocent. Because all the things they said I did, I did. Yeah. But by the blood of the Lamb, I've been pronounced yeah. not guilty. Yeah. Not guilty. Yeah. And see, I read the end of the book. We win. We overcome yes. by the blood of the Lamb yeah. yes. and by the word of our testimony. Yes. We are ultimate victors. We are champions. My grandson, he loves it when I, I raise his hand and say, champion, and he just loves it. And that's what we need to be doing. We should declare that yes. we are champions. We are ultimate victors, not because of who we are, but because of who he is. And we can't reverse this, this amazing sacrifice. Right. But what right. we can do is either accept it or reject it. We can either look forward yes. or we can keep looking backwards. Yes. But we can't look backwards and look forward. Hmm. Right. So quit looking right. in the rear view mirror yeah. right. and start looking to the things ahead. Yeah. The price has already been paid. We've already been redeemed. There is no condemnation. Now I can go forth and do the work of the kingdom because I don't have to worry about what's behind me. I press toward the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I'm there. I'm here to do kingdom work. And I don't have, need all of that that's behind me anymore. And if we reject it, it's a terrible disregard for the selfless act of love that Jesus did on the cross. Mm. 
And when I compare the, the, the puniness of, of my opponent, the inferior size of my opponent, knowing that Jesus is now my proponent, my advocate, I have nothing to fear. It, it, it gives me perspective on anyone or anything that would threaten to oppose the destiny, God's plan for my life. And I can look at my accuser eye to eye, and I can affirm, if God is for me, who can be against yes, me? Yes, yes, yes. I can affirm that there is no condemnation, yes. for I am in Christ Jesus, and the Spirit is forever interceding on my behalf. And I know that all things work together for my good. Yes. It may not seem like it's good, but it's for my good. And, and that good isn't determined by me. It's determined by what God has planned for my life. Yes. He defines the good, not yes. me. Because if I define the good, some of the stuff that has happened in my life, yeah. I wouldn't call it good, yeah. but it works for my good. Yeah. That this morning I just want us to be reminded that that price has already been paid because I know that if you're like me we live in guilt a lot of times mm -hmm. you know I went for years living in guilt from my past and I couldn't do the work that God had called me to do right and then I sat in that chair and I realized that the forgiveness or the guilt was only me. It wasn't God yeah. condemning me. Yeah. It was me condemning myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have work to do. Yes. We have work to do. And if today just simply serves as a reminder to you that there is no condemnation. Yeah. that the price has already been paid, mm -hmm. then this scripture serves its purpose this morning. Yeah. And read it. Amen. You know, every time that I read Romans 8, I pull more out of it. Because, you know, there's so much in there. And yeah. The one thing that I read in that scripture was that, that we groan and we enlarge daily. Yeah. That's like a woman who's pregnant yeah. with anticipation. And does it get hard? Yes. As women who have children, we know that the waiting is rough. Yeah. But that's when the Spirit comes in and, and it intercedes yeah. on our behalf. Yeah. Because if it were for us, you know, we'd want to get that baby out now. <laughs> but when God impregnates us, yeah. we enlarge daily. Yeah. And when we birth that thing, yeah. straightway, when we birth that thing, only imagine but we have to leave the past behind and look forward yes. to what is ahead yes. may God bless you yes.